This is a quick how to play video for Fungi of the Phalanges Forest, which is my submission for the 2023 uh, BGG in-hand game contest. Here we go. The components are 18 cards. 16 are like the main playing cards, and then two are reference cards. They're one of which is a round marker with round one and round two um, on each side. And then the wind card has wind blowing in different directions on either side. Um, and then at the bottom of the wind card, there is a reference for turn structure. The rest of the 16 cards are phalanges cards with one side being the spore side and the other side being the fungus side. The spore side has a generic tree illustration that's the same on all of the cards, whereas the fungus side has a unique fungus illustration and basically each card represents a different fungus. On the cards, you see a spore symbol on the top left. There's four different shapes and Four different patterns and so each card has a specific combination of shape and pattern so uh, this is a triangle shape an ellipse shape cuboid shape and angular shape and then the patterns are uh, this striated or lined pattern reticular pattern spined kind of spiky pattern and the granular pattern below that you can see the fungus type um, indicated by these four different icons so there's um, the a capped type bracket type, club type, and unusual type. Um, these are grayed out when the card is in the spore side, um, but when the card is in the fungus side, they're colored, um, indicating that they're active. On the left side of the card is the cost, or the condition that needs to be met to grow each of these um, fungi. So um, in the spore state, the cost is colored or, or darker, um, indicating that the condition has not been met yet. But once you have met this condition, you can actually grow the fungus um, during which you turn over the card. And now you can see that the, um, the cost is grayed out since you've already grown it. Some cards have spore costs and others have fungi costs. So for example, to grow this fungus, you would need to bring together three adjacent cards next to each other that have a, this identical cuboid shaped spore. So this is one example of a sequence of cards that you could use to grow this fungus. The cost requirement always needs to be assembled in the forest region of your hand. Basically the forest region is the main region that you'll be interacting with during your turn. The last couple things on the card are the fungal effect at the bottom, which is an effect that takes place immediately after you grow a fungus. Some are some are helpful, others are hurtful, and um, some of them are kind of more neutral or random. And then finally, at the bottom left, there is a forecast symbol on some of the cards, and this allows you to change the direction of the wind. The goal of the game is to grow fungi by meeting these cost requirements and uh, turning over the these cards to the fungus side, and uh, to try to grow as many as you can of certain types. Um, so you win the game if at the end of the game you have at least 10 fungi, and also um, you must have at least four of one type of fungi. So um, for example, um, here I have four of this bracket type of fungi. To set up the game, put all of the phalanges cards on their spore side and shuffle them up. Then um, put the round marker with round one uh, at, uh, faced up at the very bottom of the deck and put the wind card with the wind pointing rightward, um, put that underneath the first six cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you put the wind card there. In addition to showing you the wind and um, being a round marker, these two reference cards also demarcate the three different regions in your hand. So the region to the right of the wind card or on top of the wind card is the forest. The region between the wind card and the round card is the marsh. So at the beginning of the game, all your cards are in the forest and the marsh. And then the region to the left of the round card or behind the round card is the river. The game takes place over a series of two rounds, and in each round you do um, a bunch of turns to basically go through the deck. 
as a general overview, um, during a turn, you basically add a card from the marsh to your forest. You then move a card within the forest. And then finally, you remove a card from the forest. During a turn, at any point during a turn, if you ever fulfill the requirement to grow a fungus within your forest region, then you can immediately grow a fungus. No, it doesn't matter where the fungus is located in your hand, in your hand. Um, but you can immediately turn the card and grow that fungus and then um, take the fungal effect at the bottom of the card. So now let's go through a sample turn in a little bit more detail. First thing you do is you actually check the for a forecast symbol um, on the top card of the marsh. And so here we, we do see a forecast symbol. And so that allows us to change the direction of the wind. The reason why we would do that is that the direction of the wind tells us how we can add and move cards um, in the forest. So when the, um, when the wind is in this direction, uh, pointed towards the left, um, we actually have to add a card to the right side of the, of the forest because the, this rectangle um, indicating sort of a card is on the right side. So we would have to add this top card from the marsh to the right side of the forest or the top of the deck. Then the next thing we do after adding a card to the forest is move a card in the forest. We can move any card in the forest as long as we follow these two simple rules. So first is we have to move a card at least one space in the direction of the wind. So right now the wind is blowing to the left, so we have to go move it down the deck or to, towards the left. And second, the card must remain within the forest. So we can't move a card um, into the marsh. You can see based on those rules, we can use move any card except for this very last card on this end of the forest, um, which um, has nowhere to move. So in this example, I have three cards with a cuboid shaped spore. So I might try to use my move action to start bringing them together so I can, so I can bring them adjacent and fulfill the requirement to, um, to grow a fungus with that requirement, which is which also happens to be in the forest. So I'll probably move this card um, one space to bring these two together. And so after the move action, the last part of your turn is the remove action, where you actually remove a card from the forest. And you always have to remove the card on at the end of the forest, um, which depending on whichever uh, direction the wind is blowing. So right now it's blowing to the left side. Um, so I remove this card on the leftmost part of the forest or the, the bottom part of the forest um, and put it at the back of the deck um, in, the, in the river. And so that's the end of that turn. So now let's take our next turn. Um, so I'll again check for a forecast symbol on the top card of the marsh and I see that I have it. And so I'm actually going to use that to change the direction of the wind again and move it in this direction. Um, and now I'll add that top card of the marsh to the, this time the left hand, um, the left side of the forest based on the direction of the wind. Um, and then for my move action this time, I'm gonna move this, um, this card one over, one space over. And now I have brought together these three cuboid shaped spores. And so this um, meets the requirement to um, grow this fungus right here that requires three, three adjacent cuboid shaped spores. So I'll grow that by turning it over. And then I immediately have to take the fungal effect. So in this case, it says move one card from the bottom three cards of the marsh to the bottom of the river. So I have to go, go now, go to the marsh and look at the bottom three cards of the marsh and basically choose one of these to throw in the river. So it's kind of one less card that, um, that I can uh, use this round. So I might say, you know, since I've already grown a card, uh, grown a fungus using this cuboid spore, um, I, you know, I may, be, I may, I might not need this as much, so I'll probably put that, uh, throw that in the river, um, and, um, and then that'll be the end of, uh, there, that'll be the, the effect of that 
fungus. And then finally, um, the last part of the turn is to remove a card. And so um, I have to remove the card on the this this time the rightmost part of the um, of the forest. So that's this um, card that I just grew. And so I'll put that at the bottom of the deck. So for our next turn, we do not have a forecast symbol, so we cannot change the direction of the wind. So this top card of the marsh gets added to the uh, left side of the forest. And then for our move action. I think what I'll do is um, I can see that there are um, there's this card coming up with a spore with this reticular pattern, and uh, there's a couple spores with a reticular pattern already in the forest. So I think I'm going to move the cards around um, to try to group these together so we can bring three together uh, on the next turn. So what I'll do is I'll move move this card over one space. And that way these two spores with the reticular pattern are together. And then um, I don't have any other sequence of three identical shapes, spore shapes or, or um, patterns, except for this one that I already, that I had already grown. Um, so I'll just do my remove action now, which is to um, remove this card on the right, on the right side of the forest. So now we'll bring in this card. We, we do have a forecast symbol again, so we could change the direction of the wind. Um, however, I don't think that's going to be helpful to me. So I th I'm, I think I'm going to leave the wind the same. So I'll now bring this card, um, this uh, card in on the left side again. And now I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to move this, that same card over one space to bring together these, uh, these three reticular pattern spores. And the fungus associate that corresponds with this, um, with this cost requirement happens to be in the forest it's right here. So I can just turn this one over and we can take the uh, the fungal action. So this says switch two adjacent cards in the forest. So this is more a more helpful action. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is, so I think next I'm going to try to bring together these three um, triangle shaped spores. And so I'm going to try to use this effect to help me do that. I think I'll just try to bring these a little closer together and move these two, uh, exchange these two. And then uh, we'll end with the remove action by um, removing this card on the right, uh, rightmost end of the forest to the back of the deck. Now, we'll take our next turn. So we do have the forecast symbol again. Um, but I think I'm going to leave the wind in the same direction. So I'll add the card to the left side again, uh, the top card from the marsh. And then um, the other thing that I see is that we have this um, angular shaped spore coming up. And we also have a couple angular shaped spores in the forest. And so that's another set that I can try to bring together. I'll just move this, uh, move this card one space to the right in the direction of the wind. So now these uh, triangular shaped spores are together. These two angular shaped spores are together. So with both of these sets, I'll need one more, um, but uh, you know, but I'm getting there. And then, um, and then, yeah, and then I'll remove this uh, card on the right side and go ahead and go for our next turn. And let's see, I just wanted to see what we have coming up. All right, so um, let's just go ahead and move this card over one space. And so now we have created a set of uh, three angular shaped spores. 
And so um, the fungi associated with that is right here in the marsh. And so we'll just turn that one uh, to its fungus side and take the effect. So this says, move the middle card used to grow this fungus to the, to the top or bottom of the forest. So this is the middle card used to grow this fungus, um, since these were the three cards. So this is the middle one. And so I can move it to the either the top or bottom of the forest. So I can move it either here or here. If I move it here to the right side, then it's going to be removed. Um, and if I move it to the left side, then I can keep it. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that because I, I see that I have a couple of spores coming up with this granular pattern. Um, and so I, I, I will be able to make a set with, um, with this spore potentially. So I think I'm going to move it to the, this bottom end of the forest. And then, uh, and then I'll do the remove, uh, remove action and get rid of this card. One quick tip um, about the move action. So sometimes when you, um, when you start a turn, you'll add a card to the forest and then you might immediately fulfill, a, um, fulfill the criteria to grow a fungus before taking your move action. And so to remind yourself that you still have to take the move action um, uh, after, after growing the fungus, um, one thing you can do is to just raise the, um, the wind card slightly and then, and then you know, grow the fungus you know, so you can find it wherever it is, turn it over, take the effect. But then when you come back to the forest after that, um, you can remember that you have to, you still have to do the move action. So for this turn, I'm thinking we should, I'm, I'm gonna move this, uh, this card right here, two spaces to the right and put it in this most rightmost position. Um, because I think some of these other cards I might be able to use to create some sets, like I eventually wanna create this set of three triangular shaped spores and then I might be able to create a set with three of these spined spores because I see that there is a spined spore coming up. And so I'll go ahead and do that and go to the next turn. So this next turn, um, adding a card. There's no forecast symbol, so I uh, have to just stick with this direction of the wind. I added a card to the left side of the forest and um, this is a situation where I immediately was able to bring together three cards with identical um, features. So, um, so I'll be able to grow a fungus associated with this, but I'm going to put this wind card up a little bit to remind myself to take that move action after I grow this fungus, okay? So now let's try to find where this fungus is. So it's a fungus with three uh, granular um, spores as the requirement. So, um, so I can see that that's right here, three granular spores. So I turn this one over and the effect is switch one card used to grow this fungus with one card in the marsh. So there's not too many cards in the marsh left. So these are the only two cards left in the marsh. And, um, these are the cards that I use. These are the three cards I use to grow this fungus. I think I'm going to switch this card and these two cards together. This and this. And then um, and then I still have to take my, my move action. Um, so for the move action, I am going to move this uh, spined card over to the very end. So two spaces and move it to the very end to the rightmost position. And then I'll push this down because I already took the move action. 
but in doing so I have created this set of three uh, triangle shaped spores and so now I can go ahead and grow the fungus that's associated with that which is right here I'll turn that over and the fungal effect is switch the middle card used to grow this fungus with the top or bottom card of the marsh and so the middle card used to grow this fungus is right here there's only two cards in the marsh so so it has to be one of these cards um and oh i kind of lucked out here because i'm going to be able to create another set of three uh spore spore features so i'm going to switch this out so put this here and then put this over here and now you can see i immediately created this set of three uh, spined spores so I can now grow the fungus that's associated with that with three spine spores. I'll turn that over here and the effect here is move one card from t the top three cards of the marsh to the bottom of the river. So there's only two cards left in the marsh so basically I have to move one of these two cards to the bottom of the river. Um, and I think of what I what could be helpful to me next turn. I don't know that either of one of these is going to be super helpful to me during my next turn. But one thing that I do see is that I have uh, near the bottom of the river, I have th this other fungus of the same type as this, um, this unusual tape shaped fungus. So I think I might move this one to the bottom of the river. And that way, during the next round, these will be kind of close to each other and hopefully will be added to the forest around the same time. And so I can try to bring these two together to grow some other fungi, um, uh, to grow this fungi in particular. And then, um, and now I have to do my remove action. So I'll remove this card, put it on the bottom. And then I think this is going to be a lot, my last turn of the round. And there's no forecast symbol, so I have to add it to this side of the forest. And let's see, I have to move cards to the right. I, I was hoping to bring together this set of three ellipse-shaped um, spores, but I don't think I'm going to be able, be able to do that this turn. I think I'll just move this, this ellipse-shaped um, spore two spaces over and that way I can have it next to this other ellipse shaped spore but I can also have um, it next to this other striated spore so it can potentially I can potentially create a couple potential sets in the future with um, with this location I think that's going to be the only thing I can do and then I just have to um, get rid of this last card um, on the right side of the forest, then there are no more cards for me to draw from the marsh. The marsh is now empty. And so that indicates that it's the end of round one. So the end of round one, basically I turn over this round card to round two, put it at the bottom of the deck again. And so now all the cards that were in the river are back in the marsh. And the cards that were in the forest remain in the forest. And basically, I start over, do that exact same sequence of turns um, in during one more round. And then at the end of round two, when this card um, again meets the wind card, then that's the end of the game.